broke. They went in there to fix it, but it wasn't broke. It was just full of fucking quarters. They made like $30 in quarters. Um, it filled up the machine. So they reset it. They said, hey, we got a pretty good little cool hit on our hands. Let's make a few more. Ultimate Alliance Arena. Consumer popularity for the off the charts. Black 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 Welcome oh, back, back, Fox Boy. Oh, we rolling, baby. Yes. Even though our display capture isn't working because, hey, my laptop is retarded. If you're offended by that term, sue me. I don't care. So, so I've been dealing with too much crap over the last few days. I don't want to hear. So, so yeah. alive? Yes. I think. We are alive. I think we are. <sighs> Yeah, let's see if we can pull up a uh, chat on my uh, little uh, piece on the phone. Oh, this is showing some of the new games that Nintendo is displaying. And this is directly from Nintendo themselves. Yes, it is. In all, there are 270 stages to beat. That's the highest in the series to date. Use your brain box to think outside the box and lead our heroes to the goal. Box Boy and Box Girl will unload on Nintendo Switch April 26th. The ultimate spring update. Uh oh. More from Smash Bros. Of course. Super Smash Bros. Ultimate is about to spring forward with the version 3.0 update this spring. We are live. What are we on? You'll just have to wait to find out. Remember, Joker is a part of Challenger Pack 1. He's secretly been preparing for battle, and his moment will finally come before the end of April. In other words, no, this, this year, year Spring Press is the time, time to smash. And don't, and forget, don't forget, new Super Smash, Smash Brothers series oh, they got a, the they on the way too. Amiibo coming. Mm -hmm. A couple of Pokemon Amiibos. Come on, let's get the snake one. There's even more Explore and Captain, Captain Toad, Toad Treasure Tracker. Track 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 it's never too late for a journey, journey through the maze like miniature world of the Captain Toad Treasure Tracker. In fact, we have two new announcements for the Nintendo Switch version. After, After a new update, update all, courses all courses will support two-player co-op. Co Maybe Captain oh, Toad wouldn't be so nervous if someone, someone had a side. Two, two heads are better than one. I'm gonna have to mark wrong in on the wrong way. way. Yeah. This free yeah, update will be available later, later today. And the paid download content is coming. We're adding in 18 new challenges that'll see you traveling to five new courses. From sunken ships to a kingdom of sweets. And achieving new objectives in existing courses. Is this just like a Toad puzzle game, basically? Yes, it is. Um, yeah, I mean, is this already out? Uh, yeah, the, uh, yeah, yeah, uh, the original has been out for a while. I want to play that. I mean, that was a thing. I haven't played it, but it's fully co-op. I love couch co-op games. Couch co-op games are still to this day my favorite game to play. Oh, yeah. To one of the courses. The rest of the content will launch on March 14th. If you don't have the game yet, look out for a digital bundle available on Nintendo eShop later today. And yeah, we're late to this game because of uh, the Captain Toad Treasure Tracker. Once it's available, not too late. Difficulty. Yeah, and also we're we were late getting here because uh, I had a I had something to talk about here. Oh wow! Well, I've watched more Bloodstained so, yeah. Ritual of the Night. And so, the young lady Miriam posts of the alchemist's curse. Use her unwanted gifts. Much more stoked for this than I am for than I was for the first Bloodstone. I have not played this before. It looks very much like Castlevania. Well, it's it's based on Castlevania. Oh, okay. It's Igarashi finally being able to make another Castlevania game that he wants. They made a game called Bloodstained Curse of the Moon, but it's like the original NES version. Yeah, it's 8-bit. It's dated as hell on the mechanics and playability. The echo is real. What the fuck? Beyond the main story, you can dig deep into character customization. One moment, please. And more. We shall get the fall of man. Probably the camera audio. Don't be afraid to show them. Dark Eyes. Are you displaying this on the... Bloodstained. Ritual of the Night. I'm not sure. Emerges from the shadows this summer. The time has come to build a new world and take on the children. Um, who's the artist for Dragon Ball Z and Chrono Trigger? Yeah, that's definitely his art. 
It's pretty fair he's worked on a lot of the Dragon Quest games. Did the screen? No, I had, for some reason, desktop audio was going through on there for some reason. It's not supposed to. I automatically have it disabled, but for some reason it felt the need to start up again. But, like, now the... Oh, that's catching good. It's underwater. But it's not on the screen. And warp, all the I got, like I said, dude, this display capture's oh, okay. not working. Oh, gotcha. Okay, I see. No, I wouldn't sure if that was just something. Couldn't get it working. Tried everything. Tried every compatibility yeah. bullshit thing. It, it, so, it could bring. And so no. Dragon Quest Dragon Builders 2 will be available July 12, 2019. Fun fact, I've never played Dragon Quest. Really? I would, I would actually go back to take an emulator and play some of the original. The Forge up and is the old ones. There's a lot of them now. We have a new announcement for that classic RPG series. Please take a look. There are RPGs, and then there's Dragon Quest, the series that defined the genre. And the latest entry is charging onto Nintendo Switch in full force. Pairing the series' beloved style and perfectly balanced battles with the most impressive scope and elaborate story in series history. Where there is light, darkness follows. For no one does this ring truer than the Luminary, the boy that prophecy says will succeed the last hero and protect the world from a terrible end. In an odd twist of fate, the boy's royal birthright is snatched from him. On the day he becomes an adult, he finally discovers his true heritage and the powers that make him the Luminary. When he goes to the king of the largest kingdom for guidance, he is done, dark spawn. So begins the perilous journey of a hunted hero and a ragtag band of adventurers who will join him on his quest to set things right. Together they'll explore the towns and terrain of the sprawling, detailed land, Erdrain. Yeah, Dragon Quest is old. Very old. Very, old. Very, very old. Very, very old. This so, one looks yeah. like something I'll play, though. Oh, yeah. yeah. If you're a fan of JRPGs and you haven't played Dragon Quest, definitely, definitely. And when you see your party members' orders, as you do. What I'm probably going to be doing, guys, is after after this is all said and done, after we're done podcasting and everything, I'm probably going to go back and re-edit this and put the footage over top of it, because... Oh, I mean, issues with the display cards. Technical difficulties, aren't they fun? But no, they're not. That's why I want them to die. <laughs> Yeah, computer means computers don't get along either. No, no. I've never liked them. Technology is an abomination. Thank you, Nathan. Explosion. Sarah's asking. That's the Sarah's the original. Do what? Sarah's asking. You wake up there now. Who? He is not asleep yet. Wait. I'm awake. Nick is not asleep yet. More awake than I was yesterday. I just haven't played this game, so I don't have a lot to say about it. Yeah. So it's cool. I've played this game series, really. I'm assuming it's like a Final Fantasy game where you can you play this even if you don't play all the rest of them. We did what now? Yeah, they jumped off the cliff without any characters. Well, they jumped a waterfall. Oh, of course. Then they're perfectly fine. Oh, physics don't matter. They're all things. It's a waterfall. They can carry a hundred pound sword with just their regular arm. First time players and veterans should also look forward to new stories. Each sees one of the main cast members stepping into the spotlight, shedding new light on Dragon Balls. This hero's adventure is leveled up. That's a good marking. Dragon Quest the Love and Light of the Video. It's a good place to start. Definitive edition. Launching exclusively on Nintendo Switch this fall. While we just announced the addition of these new stories, there will be more new information to share in the future. Please look forward to learning more. For now, let's continue with more Nintendo Switch headlines. 
a Disney Zoom Zoom game like you've never seen before. All right, I'm good on the These Disney, Disney Zoom Zoom. Toys took I don't know about this, but and now they're ready for it. Looks like your little. It looks like your like if animals were around. <laughs> type thing. That was awesome. Yeah, look, the, look at it. That's what they look like. Look at Mickey. He's a lot like those assist, uh, those uh, assist things in the Kingdom Hearts. You can play online as well with players from around the world. I forget their freaking names. Though. And you can't mention Disney soon soon without talking puzzles. You remember those, Nick? Connect matching soon soon with them. them and set a high score. Oh, Green Meters? Yes. Yeah. This looks like a mobile game. The game also features a two player mode for it probably is online competitive just matches. to a Switch because, hey, content, we need it on Disney Switch soon for some reason. Will steal our hearts yeah, in 2019. Disney and Nintendo are working pretty good to try to do it. Oh, now Starlink looks cool. But yeah, time, I haven't yeah, got to um, do anything with in it or fact, play it. Yeah. It's none other than Star Wolf's infamous lieutenant, yes. Andrew Oikini, Pigma Dengar, and the Great Leon. Now Peppy, Falco, and Sloopy have no choice but to hunt them down, the like the animals they are. In a challenging new series of missions, you can only find in the spring update of Starlink Battle for Atlas. Every member of the Star Fox team has their own special pilot ability and skill tree. Plus, each pilot can take on any of the new missions and also Fox's missions from the base game. It's time for a game of seek and destroy. Okay. But don't expect Wolf to play fair. Look forward Wolf to news on the fair. rest of the additional content, such as starship races and oh, faction man. missions, so you're ready when the Star Fox team joins the Starlink battle for Atlas. I didn't realize that Starlink had anything to do with Star Fox until oh, just you now. Didn't? Yes. Oh, that's awesome. Not until just now. <laughs> fantasy adventure crops up once again. Another season, another reason to wield weapons and spells against monsters. Interact with townsfolk daily. Grow vegetables and fruits at the farm. Cook some fish. I'm hooked on you. Cook up a storm. <laughs> or even raise so monsters. Everybody's just tuning in. We are watching the Live. Yeah, yeah, we are. That's why we're so early. Yeah. 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 The Factory Four Special, fully remastered for Nintendo. <laughs> and the one thing in. is, we would be showing you what we're watching right now, but before long, we may yeah. become more than friends. We have to run the laptop. I mean, you're already kind of fighting out the ladder. See what the heart pounding really like wet life has in store for you, <laughs> exclusively yeah, in this so. new version of the game. But it's able to handle it because, well, actually, it's only running two technically because I have a I have a HDMI splitter, right, four way splitter, and two are the one in there and that one are doing. And We can finally confirm that Marine Factory 5 is in development. YouTube, like Look forward to more info in the future. Let, let people know they're coming out. No. Not because of copyright, Sarah Williamson, because of technical difficulties. That's why. Rescue lost souls <laughs> before those souls become monsters. In this action RPG from the developers of I Am Setsuna huh. and Lost Spear. So have they released exactly what they're going to be the announcing today? It's or do we have any surprises you think that they're going to do? Well, the first thing was a surprise. It was uh, the so announcement that tenets, Mario Maker was finally coming to Switch. But we missed that because uh, while I was trying to get the display capture to work, uh, the, the, you know, the event started. Yeah. 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 You got the tail end of that. The tail end of that. Yeah. So is there any Nintendo game right now that you were hoping for? The only one that I'm looking forward to, they've already announced that they just restarted, so they're not going to have anything on it this year, like, probably, which is the new Metroid. No. I'll say, I'll say we'll at least see something of it. Well, if anything, like a proper announcement from, like, the head of Retro Games would be like, hey guys, we're back, and we're going to do good with this in summer 2019. Either that or... That looks cool, though. Yeah. Hard. Robots? Oh, no. Yoshi. Back at it again with the craft I do like the Yoshi games. I do love the Yoshi games. They are... I like Yoshi Story. The original on N64. I like Yoshi Story and uh, Super Mario World 2 a lot. Yoshi. Yoshi Island. I mean, they're different. Definitely very... Yoshi's Island has one of the most hyped boss battles of any Mario Yoshi oh, yeah. game of all time. Oh, that's cool. Hey, yeah, Mr. Metal, the uh, direct has started. Even at this scale, you'll have some challenging bosses to rank. So has the direct started? Yes, it has. Uh, you can probably hear it in the background. If anything, I'm probably going to be posting this 
I'm probably going to be posting or reposting this later after I add the footage in of the uh, Nintendo Direct. So be ready for that. That's the best I can do, guys. I'm sorry. For now, if you want to pull it up on a separate window and watch it with us, you can. Yes, you can. Might be a little delayed. Or you can sync it up. I mean, there's ways. To yeah, you can try to do it. Yeah. So right now, Yoshi's Crafted World is, will be available March 29th, 2019. So yeah, this year. It'll be available within the next month. How's it going so Lucas is asking what you're predicting next. Next, we have a follow-up. Lucas is asking what you're predicting. I'm running the series. I'll let you go first. You go first. Well, I'm probably going to say they're going to announce uh, HD remasters of Legend of Zelda. Beat me to it. I hope so. Yeah, that's that what I'm cool. looking forward to more than anything. Because they talked about it now mm-hmm. for like the last year. Anything and, was Zelda, man. Oh, yeah, pretty much anything was Zelda. Yeah. Well, and if they remaster, if they re, if they what pretty the much port the remaster mean? from the 3DS to both, yeah, you know, both of the versions on there. Oh, Fire Emblem. <laughs> Okay. That's another Three good one. Yeah. Uh, very the much. Uh, said to be protected by a the ones I played were actually for the Game Boy Advance. Those were the first ones Three that I actually played. I went, uh, I those were, were uh, that was, uh, no, it wasn't uh, Oracle South, of uh, Age of Seasons. Uh, that's, that's Zelda. Yes, that's the Capcom and Nintendo the partnership for Empire. Zelda for the GBA. Okay. That was Ages and Seasons. Both were very great games, but they don't align with most of the uh, Hyrule historians. They well, they say that there are three currently three timelines in the Zelda in Zelda timeline. Ages and Seasons are in one of the are in one of like the mega alternate times. Whereas whereas they say the big split happens at in Ocarina. The the split happens at Ocarina if, if. the hero defeats the defeats the boss. If the hero doesn't defeat the boss, or if the hero the dies, Fire Emblem three houses and those so I think uh, I'm not exactly sure. So all you hardcore Zelda you fans out there, I'm pretty hardcore Zelda fan, but I do not understand the story completely. I would just say the Hyrule historian uh, that official Nintendo release yeah. gave us the, as much information as we know, but there's still a lot of empty spaces left. But it seems that a lot of theories have developed on the internet. All that I know is that the beginning. Is Skyward Sword. Yes. Skyward Sword, Skyward Sword is, is the, the canonically first one because that's when the Master Garrett Sword Mock is born Monastery from lies the Skyward the center Sword. Of three and large territories. So this is before is a link to the past the for Church of Seros, Seros, the main religion of Fodlan, as well oh as the Knights of Seros. Well, like, there's a link to the Not past. Not only does the Church there was the, serve to maintain there was Link's order awakening. in Fodlan, Oh, it's monastery yeah. also Wait a minute. That was, uh, officers that was Zelda Those 2. Those who trained was... there. No, no. Zelda 2, that was Link's Adventure. Link's Adventure, got you. Because the there was the original Academy Zelda, uh, Legend of Zelda 2, Link's Adventure, which was a side story. And then there was the, uh, the and then, uh, I'm not sure the past, the but it's the past. Yeah. 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 Into the past, yeah. Link's, yeah. Past, yeah. Link's, yeah. Past, yeah. Link's yeah. Awakening on Game Boy. The Blue Lions uh, yeah. boasts right. Prince Dimitri of the Holy Kingdom of Argus as its house leader. This house is... Because I remember playing Link's in the past. Uh, or no, the Golden have, Deer I is for students from the Lester Alliance. The, Their house leader boss, is Claude, I ran out of the heir of the noble family the that leads the Alliance. Oh, yeah. I like, put a lot of time yeah. into that game as well. Uh, Link to the Past especially. I think that one in Ocarina of Time, I put more time into in those than any of them. In addition to the Currently, Breath of the Wild has consumed my video game life right now. Well, I know you're, what you're little time yours. I get to play. Yeah, yeah you're you're in a, currently on a Breath of the Wild kick. No, I am. I'm stuck in like a tick. <laughs> Students are expected to travel to various lands. Then you Sometimes have to make your own Greek pasta, which is not real, but it is an interesting story. Experience. Have you ever heard? Have you ever seen it? From uh, around, uh, uh, there, supposedly there was a copy of uh, Legend of Zelda: Majora's Mask that belongs to a kid named Ben, who drowned and died, and his uh, save was left on there leadership. when his parents stole it. The and the person found it, and uh, they tried to play the game, and it was unplayable, so they deleted the save. And from then on, the game constantly. Game cartridge would so uh, put him in like a, a like a, a warped version of the game, Master the and it would magic. always end with "you shouldn't have done that." And <laughs> yeah. then he would burn That's a creepy pasta. Oh, yeah. oh, right. So, as far as the cre- uh, creepy pasta stories, 
I don't know how much air truth is. There's, there's not much. Yeah, I mean, how much air truth is. There's no truth to it. There's no truth to it. But they're interesting stories. Yeah, they are very well um, oddities of stories. It reminds me of, like, Tales from the Crypt or Twilight Zone. And I'd like to have seen some really good film adaptations with, like, Slenderman. Hell, have you ever seen Marvel Hornets? Marvel Hornets is an online series that went from, I think, 2005 to, like, 2013. And over that span of eight years, they told the story of this group's interactions with Slenderman. And it was awesome. You actually just reminded me of something. I have a short film idea for a specific SCP. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. There's a key that uh, has coordinates on it that change randomly. If you use it to go to the coordinates that it has on it and unlock the door that's there, you end up in this like forest clearing where you can walk to the other side and open the door to come back out again. But the more times you walk through, the more creepy and fucked up it starts to get. And, I, and uh, supposedly they sent people through with cameras and shit, and I think it'd be cool to do a short film of like found footage style stuff involving that key. Oh, I like that. Three houses. Well, the only thing is, is I, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I don't know like who um, you'd have to contact to get. Well, all you have to do, do is find the original storyteller. Yeah, find the original storyteller and you get permission from them. As long as I think, as long as you credit them and give them like, like the give them uh, but more developed the right time, to give it yes, the before so anyone else for like kind of new release date, July twenty sixth. So if anybody knows how to get in contact with the guy that wrote that SCP story about the key that opens the door, uh -oh. Chad. hit me up. Chad Bartlett is in the comment section. What's up, Chad? What's up, Chad? How's it going? <laughs> in this next entry of this iconic series, the last player standing wins. That is Tetris. Um, 99 players. What's Wait, the are they doing a Tetris Battle Royale? Supreme. I know it's a it. it's a party Tetris thing. Yeah. Tetris ninety nine. Yep. Tetris battle Tetris royale. Tetris royale. What the fuck? The iconic puzzle game arrives with an <laughs> offer. In all honesty, that one Tetris, the new Tetris game, I forget the name of it. I've seen I've seen some video stuff from it, and I gotta be honest, you're attacked with garbage. I love it. I, I love the look of it. The look of it is just so beautiful. It's literally just Tetris Last Man Standing with no time limit. It's 99 players, though. There are people who would be going for days on the same match. But 99 players. Yeah, it'd come down to like two players just destroying it. And they'd never, they'd never lose, probably, because there's people who are insane at Tetris. Do you all, uh, I don't know if you all remember this, but there was a guy. Oh! Dead by Daylight on the Switch? Nice. I'm not going to play it on the Switch, but it's cool. <laughs> That actually looks pretty good for the Switch. Struggling to survive. And then, you meet another survivor. But it's too late. The killer is upon you. Now run. Hide. Scavenge you guys ever play Dead by Daylight? I've been wanting to. I've this not is, yeah, this is the one where I've put a shit ton of time in. All the different killers. Yeah, yeah so you've got Texas Chainsaw, Jason, who are you? Yeah, it's got Leatherface, Freddy, Michael Myers, um, and, uh... It was, and the Jigsaw Killer. Yeah, I've seen and then it's got a character. bunch of original killers as well. I've played myself. While you're on the hunt. Yeah, it's, so. it's fun. Personally to me, uh, personally to me I've had more fun. I had a little bit more fun with uh, Rise of the 13th. But that's me. Nick, I, I, Nick I have way more fun than Dead by Day. Like yeah, well, because, because for him, he can choose to be the killer directly. Which yeah. I wish and I play a main killer. So. I love watching uh, Ryan Hayward. Not to mention, you're not instantly oh, yeah, dead whenever hilarious. the killer catches you. Oh, yeah. uh, it was like, daylight. and now I'm going to mount you on my... On my <laughs> you got, a, yeah. you got about so a 50% chance. Oh, oh, wow, that one's... All right. Deltarune yeah. right. yeah. 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 Chapter 1. Yeah. So I guess that, that's that coming that to the switch. Hey. Doge. What's up, Doji? Just me and my 20-pixel puppy. What the heck? What? This is a, this is pretty much a, a, a the next step. There aren't actually that many series. dogs in the game. Well, that's disappointing. <laughs> Ooh, yeah, it's for awesome. free? Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's... we're catching in development. Will not be free. Yeah. Understood. Understood. Well, the first one's been free on uh, PC. Oh, Damon Mach. Action game. I really? Damon Machina. Damon Machina. Hello everyone. I'm Kenichiro. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, Sukata. I've seen his. Uh, uh, he's like he's really big in mechs. He loves doing mechs. Like this stuff is awesome. I love this stuff. 
Yeah. This is like Mech Warrior on. Uh, yeah. Like, uh, this is an armored core, <laughs> armored <laughs> core for Nintendo. Oh yeah. Well, this looks very detailed. Though. Yeah, no, so. <laughs> well, Nick is all about this stuff. Yeah. Oh, I love Mech stuff. Too. Same. Your Mech Warrior is like one of your favorite. Mech Warrior series, is right? probably no, one of my not Mech Warrior. Mech Warrior is okay. Like Gundam's my favorite thing, okay. and Zone of the Ender is actually my favorite favorite. Zoe, yeah, Zoe's really good. Because obviously Hideo plus Mech. I like the more simulation Mech stuff. Yeah. Military, uh, military, like ultra realistic. Uh, like Steel Battalion. Yeah, I really like. I, I do like the realistic ones to an extent, but I love the fucking sci-fi elements that they add in anime and stuff. Yeah, the ones that just go. The ones that fly around and like you know, <laughs> bounce off each other with blades on their arms and stuff. But that looks really cool. That looks like a good hybridization of uh, of like. Gundam style, and, oh yeah, that lightning just that lightning. Like, <laughs> no, that gun. It's a very good mix of the Gundam style and also the. Uh, racing is headed for Nintendo Switch. Really, finally. Grid Autosport comes wow. loaded with a mix of high-speed thrills, believable handling, and a difficult Actually, it's pretty good. Skills for skills. I wonder if it's got four motion control. Racer, as you master the world's fastest cars to win more Maybe. I mean, I don't mind. Uh, if well, the motion controls handle as good as they do on Mario Kart, I will gladly use it. Well, you know what? You know what they need to do? They need to come out with like the steering wheel you can actually put on your desk, on your desk, oh, yeah. and actually have the have the. I miss doing that. The Wii remotes uh, in the side. Oh yeah, they do have hill controls. Split screen on a single system. Street racing is demolition derby. It looks right decent on. for Switch, but just compared to some of the other modern racing oh, yeah. games that are out, it kind of looks old. <laughs> yeah. Well, you have to take... There you go. Elboy. That's a good-ass fucking game. I need to finish that game really bad. Yeah, this game is awesome. That looks really good. For, I, I keep saying that, but the limitations that are there on the Switch... The thing is, watching a trailer does this no justice. Actually playing this, the game made me hear voices that weren't there. Well, that's it's how that well, that's fucking immersive. Yeah, it, it, it fucks with you really bad. Audio and artistic achievement. British game and game beyond entertainment. Find out why. Oh, that looks awesome. Yeah. Well, this Hellblade. You know what? The face, the face animations on this. Getting stronger. That you know. On, uh, oh, combat oh, you know what pisses me off? You know what really pisses me off? Is that they had all of the, uh, all these people working on Mass Effect and I think, what, how many thousands of people working on Mass Effect and and they fuck up the facial animation. Hellblade's like, what, like 30 people or something? No, no, 13. 13, yeah. Even less. Yeah, it's because they brought people who actually fucking knew what they were doing. Yeah, um, instead of instead of that one random person who it was their first time working in animation, and he gave and they gave him the job all because oh oh I got a recommendation from a from a fuck from a friggin' uh, like video game critic magazine. Give me a break. Oh, they're finally announcing it for Switch. Uh, uh, sorry, the uh, remaster of three. Oh. Now, the only way they can properly redo Remaster 3 is if they include, is if they actually do the full version of it that they originally were going to do. Well, they need to fix the controls for one. Well, 3 is okay. 3, by comparison, 3 is not my favorite, but I think it's still good. I only got it for the American Revolution. Well, that's fine. That's fine. No. No, because for, for me, I like the second... Uh, Dude! Oh, nine. Dude! Yes. yes. Oh, shit! Final Fantasy Nine. Hell yeah, that's oh, my favorite one. I, my, that's one of my favorites, too. I mean, to be honest, Seven was not if even... If I still had a Switch, I would be going straight home to get that. Most people, most people, like, but the reason why people say Seven is so good is because... Because it got a movie. Well, not only that, not only that because... Well, it was because it was the first one that did a massive JRPG element... Seven also six. seven story is fucking fantastic. Yeah, but it is. Nine's yeah. gameplay was the most fun that I had with the original Final well, Fantasy. Is like that I played Final on Fantasy six through nine, a lot of people say are the best in the series. Yep. Yeah. Final Fantasy six was the lat was like, oh shit, is this? This looks familiar <laughs> somehow. Oh no! Really? Oh yeah. This is okay, I see how this is working. I don't it's know what it is, but it looks it's fucking a complete cool. Complete like tag team co-op hack and slash. It is. That's awesome. So it's two players 
uh, and each player gets their own, like, cyber map. doesn't just look like hack and slash, it looks like character action. Yeah, it looks like there's a lot of yeah. strategy. Character action is always awesome. That's awesome. Oh, man. Those graphics are there. city. It, it mods me a Jet, oh, okay. jet Set Radio Future. That's awesome. You're actually, uh, you're actually cops investigating crimes and stuff, and you actually have to, like, break down the crime scene and stuff like that, and you can do recreation. It's a lot like Batman in that regard. I like oh, that. Yes. I love that element of Batman, so I'm always down for investigating some shit. Let's see. It hasn't said yet. It hasn't said yet. I think that's a... Oh, wow! It can transform into different beasts. That's awesome. So far, this is the thing I am the most hyped for that they have shown. Yeah, I don't know what it is, but this looks amazing. Oh, he's coming in! Yes! Oh, my gosh, she's Tora. Tora. Yeah. Yes! Oh, my gosh. Astral, Astral Chain. Chain. So you got his epic community. That, August 30th, dude. Oh my god. That looks dude. badass as fuck. So August, platinum? Oh! Awesome. No wonder it looks badass as fuck. It's platinum. Yeah. It's just rich. Astral Chain. Chain. Black Platinum Games. It's, uh, they're, uh, Bayonetta, uh, yeah, Metal they're, Gear Rising. Oh, okay, guys, uh, they're really, really, really good right character here. action game makers. Yeah. I hope you're That's excited awesome, to learn more dude. about how combat will play out in this game. Please stay tuned. And speaking of Platinum Games, I'm sure you're very curious about Bayonetta 3. Rest assured, the developers of Bayonetta 3 are hard at work. Uh, I'm looking forward to learning more. Our next title will be the last announcement of the day. Oh Three god, okay. Yeah, pretty short last Fine, thing. fine. What do we got? What do we got? Come on. How's this? Avatar's last epic. Oh, I don't think so. <laughs> oh! Link's Awakening! Oh! Link's Awakening! Yes! 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 I knew they were gonna do a remaster! Look at him. Oh my god. Yep. Yeah. Oh god, yeah! Come on, please don't. You, that right, can't don't be Don't get it. overly hyped. It might not be a remaster. Well, the, the yeah. opening animation like that, it has to be. Not necessarily. What is the egg on top of Doom Mountain? Yep. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> what? Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Yes, that's awesome. Do it. That is freaking awesome. So it's a 2D platform style, just like the, just a, uh, a 3D remake of the 2D platform style. Well, yeah, it's it's a lot like how they did uh, Link to the Past. Link to the Past had a fixed 3D plat, had a fixed 3D action. Mm -hmm. So, uh, this is the style they've been making the 2D Zelda Zone for a little bit. But oh, yeah. This has got like its own art style as well, it looks uh. like. Wait a second. That wasn't Lon Lon. Well, maybe so, it was. What did you Hang think? on. Lon Lon, Lon Ranch. The, uh... 1993's Game Boy Classic, The Legend of Zelda. Um, I think Awakening. it's... We'll they have different... Like, the there's a lullaby of the Windfish in Link's yeah. Awakening, and I think that's what it could have been. ...has been reborn as a new experience, and we'll have more to say in the future. Yeah, I recognize a lot of the stuff Please, that they showed there from the original. That's all for today's Nintendo Direct. Thank you so much for watching. Okay. Uh, it's not the Zelda that we were hoping for. No, but, but it's but it's but still, still, at least it's one Zelda. that it's one that I would I think deserves a remake, especially modern remake. I mean, it's yeah. not the next Zelda on the chain. You know, it's not no. The like new that's Breath of the Wild. that's a pretty it's, underrated uh, Zelda because like a lot of people say that uh, like uh, the that have played it anyway say that Link's Awakening is one of their top Zelda games. Yeah, so. I think it's, see, I never got around to really playing that so. Like a link to the past, I put in a lot of time in that. Yeah. One. Link's Awakening, however, I did not. So Link's Awakening's basically as good as Link to the Past. Uh, Some people might debate it's better. Like I think Link's yeah. uh, Link oh, to the God. Past is better. Oh, but and this is going still to a really good game. Let, Quinn, close Quinn is angry look. because there was no Animal Crossing. Yes, Quinn.
<laughs> I don't know. I... I'm sorry, Quinn. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, I think we was uh, hoping for a little bit more. Um, but, yeah, yeah, the fact that I, I'm still happy that you had uh, at least three or four good games that were... Well, it, there's no there's no saying that it, there won't be another, you know, another announcement for it here soon, Quinn. I mean, who's to say that they won't just be like, Surprise! <laughs> she is shook. She is they shook. They're they are shook. Sorry. Us Nintendo fans are pretty passionate, 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 passionate about our game. I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm sorry. really sorry. Please don't. There we go. You just play this. Take care of yourself. All right. Take yourself back I, I think at one point I had a Game Boy. I'm so sorry though. I really am. I don't what game know. do I have in here? I had a, I had a, I had, oh, I had a man, Google, they're gone. Mega Man I had a Battle Boy, <laughs> and I had a PSP. Whoops! And my PSP lasted all about two months. Oh God. Oh, God! Well, that was wow, Quinn. Uh, wow, Quinn. Man. Quinn again. So very, no very, Animal Crossing very, for the Animal Crossing very miffed. fans. Yeah, Quinn is very miffed to say the to say the least. <laughs> See, it's like. Animal Crossing would be very cool, yeah, and they need a new console, Animal Crossing, but they did put out New Leaf not that long ago. It's been a few years now, but yeah. it's not that old either. Yeah, but people are... Considering the fact that we haven't got a proper fucking Metroid title in how long now? Like, I think the, the Animal Crossing the fans can was... chill their shit a little bit. Well, the other M was how long ago? You don't count the other M even. Other M is not a proper Metroid title. Yeah, but I'm talking about the last big one that they actually tried to put effort into. Yeah, but it wasn't even the Metroid team that worked on it either. No, it wasn't. So, I mean, the regular Metroid team could have easily been working on a Metroid game in that time. But now we know that they're restarting again the main Metroid thing. So it's like, don't exactly feel that bad for Animal Crossing fans when they got New Leaf. Like, which was really, really, really good. Like, you know, not that long ago. Compared to Metroid, it's like, I've been waiting a lot longer than you, so I can't feel that bad for you. I do like Animal Crossing as well, and yeah, I would that's... like to play one, but Metroid is more important to my heart, so. I understand. <laughs> I, I, I understand. I'm glad we got a, we got a little bit of a, uh, a little bit of a teaser there for uh, Legend of Zelda. At least it was something. I, I think Yeah, Samus Returns the... was a good remake. I saw... It was a remake. So. I saw the, the waves crashing, and I'm just like, this is either Wind Waker or Link's Awakening. But they did win uh, Wind Waker HD not too long ago. It just doesn't look like that style, that cell shading style that they used for it. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden, I see uh, the I see Link Link holding on to the to the uh, the the ship the ship as me, as best he can, trying to keep the sail up. And then that was that. And I'm like, oh, Link's Awakening. So Link's Awakening came out in 1993 for the Game Boy. Yep. Mm -hmm. So. That is why I missed out on playing that one. I, I got to I play it, it as Link's Awakening DX on the Game Boy Color, I believe. I remember that one. Yeah, mm -hmm. the, when they remade it for the Game Boy Color. They it's, just, it's exactly the same game. It just had color instead of being black and white. So. Yeah, yeah. I, oh, Lord. That is what the graphics of that look like. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's basically like a little bit less so that is less really graphically that is, nice that is the graphics of the best. Game <laughs> Boy to Game Boy Color. Sorry, I guys. I, I'm not. A, I'm, yeah. I'm Man, not I didn't bring my nostalgia goggles today. You want to take a look? Oh that? yeah, look at that. I remember yeah. that. That's yeah. That's the original and the the and the oh, color version. I know the color I can't still, see this where I, I was. Still play it. It's basically like the next step up graphic wise from the original Zelda. No. I totally play that since it's on yeah. Game Boy. I mean, camera definitely like, didn't like, really see that. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's fine. But honestly, man, I'm I'm glad that we're getting something new. And at the end there, I think that was a little tease for uh, if not for if not uh, to continue on the uh, Link's Awakening, but also that song that was being sung. I think was uh, the rancher's daughter at uh, Long Long Long. Yep. Yeah, Long Long's ranch. Hey. So I'm thinking maybe that's a ne maybe that's a hint as to what is going to be remastered or re-released next, which is going to be Ocarina of Time on uh, on the Switch. Which I'm hoping, I'm hoping. 
Please oh, make yeah. it happen. Because they really don't have to do much. Like, the DS version's great. Yeah, yeah so just, just, just port, port the DS Just port version. it, yeah. Port the DS version. Port DS, DS Ocarina and Majora's to Switch. Yeah. yeah, as a matter of fact, do a double. Like, like double yeah. up. Like, okay, have, like, like um, actually, could you imagine the epic box art? Like, one half is uh, is Ocarina of Time, and then the dark side of it is, uh, is Majora's yeah. Mask. And having both of them with the updated graphics and the updated gameplay stylings of the 3DS version... That, to me, is perfect. That, to me, is, like, how you're supposed to do it. Because those games have been out now for how long now? What, over 20, th- almost uh, 20 years? 97 was Ocarina of Time. Yeah, like, sure, both so. games have been out for 20 years, pretty much. Mm-hmm. And both of them are staples of the of the, the Zelda timelines. I mean, Majora's Mask is pretty much dark, like, darkest timeline. Mm-hmm. And like there's, there's still audit. people who haven't played Majora's Mask that I'm always like telling them now. I'm just like, you got to play Majora's Mask. Yeah, Majora's you know, Mask. Like, don't go into is, it expecting regular Zelda, hard. but expect to play like the most like twisted like Zelda that you've ever played, and mm-hmm. it's great. Oh yeah, Majora's Mask is great. It's considered by many to be, if like at least in the top three, mm-hmm. and, and and it's def like a lot of people say it's definitely top three in terms of uh, 3D, like the, like the full. 3D Zelda. Well, it was very, um, even though it was very rushed, so the game itself was as massive as, like, Hyrule Field on Ocarina of Time, no. it was very polished as far as this gameplay. The dungeons, I thought, were let up very well. Yeah. And the story is what's, it has a lot of gameplay value, because you have to beat it within 72 hours, and you have the Ocarina of Time that you can use to jump back and reset the clock. Yeah. Yep. But there's certain bosses and certain... Uh, events that happen in the story that only happen at certain times. For example, the final boss, you have to fight him literally within a couple hours before before, the before Judgment Day. Yeah, so pretty it, much. It yeah, actually it ends up... Yeah, the moon yeah. It ends up actually being like sort of a longer game in a way than Ocarina of Time, even though it's not technically as large. Well, it's, like, because, in terms of, like, it's because even stuff. though it takes place within the same realm, it takes place within the same vicinity of each other it's the variance of the combat and the variance of the enemies and the story the story evolves as you go along too yeah. and that's what makes it such a great until game until I played Breath of the Wild though I would say it was one of the hardest Zelda games I've ever played if you're trying to figure it out fresh yeah. without w- using a walkthrough you're looking at a good long about a month straight trying to figure it out and beat it I mean, unless, if well, you yeah. use walkthroughs, yeah. you can beat it within a couple of days. But well, of course, well, if you're trying to get everything in it, it's definitely probably the most difficult to figure out how to do everything there is to do in it. Like in terms of just beating the campaign, though, the hardest Zelda for me was probably actually Link's Awakening. Link's Awakening is challenging. It yeah. is. It is, and like I said, me running out of uh, me running out of arrows at the end of the damn game. Yeah. <laughs> I was just like, no. I ran out of errors across the wall the whole time. Just, well, yeah, I mean, monster spam errors. Well, the number one thing that people forget that actually best strat I can tell you, if you want to keep getting arrows and at the same time, uh, you know, kill enemies the fastest. Uh, sneak attacks. Sneak attacks are the best way to take out the goblins. Oh, that's a uh, new subscriber. <laughs> I forgot that I had that activated. <laughs> Sorry. But, yeah, we, um, so far, man, this has been, like, this was fun. I'm going to, of course, make this unlisted or private, and then I'm going to release the, re-release this later with the full footage included, so. Uh, I'm more stoked about Bloodstain too, now, by the way. Oh, Bloodstain? Well, it looked really good. I played Curse of the Moon, and I haven't said it yet, because everybody's going to be like, burn him, burn him at the stake. Bloodstain, Curse of the Moon, it's not good. It's not a good game. I'm sorry. It sucks. That's <laughs> Those mechanics are far too dated to be fun, and I don't understand how anybody enjoys that bullshit. Like it's clunky and plays like you're wearing lead boots on your character at all times. See, that's why I feel about Dark Souls. Like well, I that's fucking love Dark, Dark, Dark Souls. Doesn't feel that way when you actually learn how to play it. Well, once yeah. you get into the learning curve, but the first like eight hours, I was just yeah. clunky, clunk, clunk. Well, but it's know, like it's the thing where you have to hit diagonally up to go up the stairs still, like they did on the NES, and that's well, a that's horrible what they were mechanic. Going for. Oh, I know, I don't... I, I, I'm all for, like, retro stuff, but... I'm all for retro stuff, but, like, don't make your controls so dated that it's unplayable. Like, that's, that's stupid. So, yeah, that's how... I gave it a fair shot, and I was like, dude, I don't understand how people still like this. Well, you see, there's proper ways to do it. I mean, me, I, I would say 
the best example I can think of of returning to its roots, but yet updating it in a way to where it, even though it's a modern game, it has that old school feel. Doom, Doom twenty sixteen, yeah. because it maintains the brutality and it, and it maintains that old school feel of you not having to reload to keep fighting and all yeah. that. Whereas, whereas uh, Doom three was more like straight horror game. Yeah, and I appreciate also it. Um, I appreciate it. they've it's done like remakes both. on like other games like uh, that keep like a sort of retro feel while having like modern playability and such like Strider. Strider's remake's fucking fantastic, and like I don't know, just the this Castlevania like this Bloodstained looks yeah. a lot more fun than Curse of the Moon does. Well, that's well, no, and that's was. and that's fair. I mean, personally, to me, I I like. I, I like. I, I didn't mind Bloodstained. Uh, I didn't mind the first, you know, the first Bloodstained game. But I, but I will say this: this one looks a whole hell of a lot better. It looks like it's going to be, going to be enormous. It's going to have so much to it, and it has. It's a lot of. The, it addresses a lot of the uh, complaints that people had from Castlevania, from Castlevania One to Cat to. To Castlevania uh, Symphony of the Night. Symphony of the Night, to a lot of people, is the best Castlevania. Yeah, well, it's still my favorite. The first legitimate, like, uh, fun one. Because uh, the original for the NES, man, it was kind of... It was challenging. Very. Too it, challenging. It was, it it was, was challenging, challenging yeah. and the reason for that is because if they made it easier, if they gave it the same gameplay mechanics of uh, of Circle of, or of uh, Symphony of the Night... Then the move, then the game would have actually been a lot shorter because someone I, I've seen speedruns of, of people beating it in like thirty minutes, mm-hmm. and that's when they know everything, where to go, where to jump, where to go, who to hit, uh, and you know finding the dungeon wall chicken and all yeah. that, yeah. and uh, and then eventually, uh, <laughs> you, you see, I've seen a little funny comment the, ad- that. the adaptations amazing. that you've seen after the first Castlevania, Simon's Quest. They tried to throw in too many RPG elements. They had great ideas. I mean, the day and night cycle, whereas traveling during the day, it's okay. You'll run into some enemies, but you'll be all right. Traveling at night, that's when the nightmares come out. And I really would like to see them try and do a remaster of Simon's Quest that actually has the day and night mechanic, but gets rid of all the BS RPG elements and actually makes it more like a more like a Castlevania game instead of instead of a crappy RPG that is so unbalanced and so broken, like it, <clears throat> you don't, like, you don't get a good feel for it. But See, then, if I didn't think Nintendo would shut it down, I would do my own fan Castlevania to show people that you can do 8-bit Castlevania with modern playability and well, make it fucking awesome. Actually, but would be, Nintendo would, would probably Nintendo be like, nope, down. stop. It would be Nintendo or Konami, down. yeah. Yeah, because, yeah. Uh, so everybody yeah. knows Konami is a bunch of nice uh, guys to uh, make uh, good sorry, decisions sorry. about stuff. Uh, yeah, <laughs> that's what I have to say about them. So, um, I mean, how do you do that to your to some of your best creators, guys? How do you do that? People who have proven themselves, tested themselves, and have given you the best years of their lives, and have given you so many classic things, all to just throw it away, all because it's just like we're well, not profitable enough for us. Oh, 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 oh. Fuck off. Somewhere. Yeah. Oh yeah, that one. That, oh, that one's been flickering on and off. No, this one. This one. Yep. That one's been going. Beep, boop, beep, boop. Yeah, it's probably not. It's probably not. It's, yeah, it's in loose or one. something. Well, it's not really a light bulb that you screw in. It's like two pins that you basically jam into there, but it might be loose. I don't know. Maybe. These it, are, it's been flickering lights. on and off. It's Maybe like, it just needs a warm up. The contacts could be like fucking worn all the shit. For Maybe. But. Overall, uh, the steps that Castlevania has taken, uh, Castlevania 3, it returned to the old formula, but it gave you different characters to play with. You could swap out the three different characters, or the four different characters. Castle, Super Castlevania 4, that's where the modern day, the, the, like the classic Symphony of the Night formula, formula really started to come into effect, was because the, the map was huge. The map was massive. You, you were overpowered as hell, but you had all of this room to work with. And then I think they saw that and they were like, let's try this. Let's dial back the power of the, of the protagonist and actually give him some, uh, like, actually, like, nerf him, or nerf him to the point where he is, like, he is absolutely useless at the beginning. 
and he actually has to work to get his stuff back. Mm -hmm. Whereas in Castlevania, all you have to use from the beginning of the game is the whip. Just whip, 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 yep. whip. That's all you gotta do. Like you get you get all the you know, the holy cross and you get all this the axes and the throwing knives and all that. But, but you have to get the dagger on certain ones though, right? What, like, on, oh, that's the original Castlevania. Yeah, original Castlevania. Yeah, you have to get the dagger. But first. Super Castlevania Four, no, none of the none of the weapons are necessary. None of them. It was all the whip. That's all you needed. That's yeah. one thing that I would like to do too, if I was ever to make a fan remake, is put all the original sub weapons in there and then actually make them have an additional use to where they are needed during the game. Yeah, like. Uh, with the knife, you know, since it throws in a straight line, have little places you could actually throw a knife through a wall to hit, like, a switch or something like that. Oh, yeah. yeah. I can see that. Crap like that. Well, and, and there's also... Uh, Ego Raptor actually did a video on Super Castlevania 4. Yep. How he said that... How he said that he thought that if they were to... If they were to make the game more about the whip, you know, like, if you, like, did the swinging hook thing more often, and there was parts where you actually had to, like, go up and go down... And if you failed, you went down into a little creek, into a river down below, and you had to climb back out and try again, and trial and error stuff like that. And that's by the end of the game, if there's a massive swinging hook section where you actually have to like chase down one of the bosses, he's like fleeing to the next room, and you have to get there before he heals up and and makes himself uh, back in full health. Castlevania um, biggest gripe about that the or original for me was the stairs. The mm -hmm. mechanics on these stairs is... Oh, you have to hold up and right sense. to go up the stairs? Yeah, That's in no, blood When you jump, and you know good well you landed on it, but it's right at the edge, you'll fall right through it. Mm -hmm. Many cuss words have came out of my mouth in yeah. that game. That's yeah. one of the reasons that I was like, Bloodstain's not good because they put that in the game on purpose. Oh, yeah. And I'm like, oh, why yeah, would you do that? To the past. <laughs> it's like, why would you put the bad elements of the games mm -hmm. in there as well? Like, mm -hmm. that's well, not I necessary. More traditional Castlevania no, games. you don't like, have to put the bad stuff in there to do that. No, you don't. You know. Like uh, for an example, uh, like amazing current day retro, like two two games, Axiom Verge, Shovel Knight. Yeah, you can do retro without having to play like dog shit. Like I don't understand why it has to play like crap to be true to the original. I don't know why. I don't know why. <laughs> certain, certain things in the past definitely have um, were revolutionary. We kept a lot of stuff, um, but there's still a lot of stuff I do not miss. Um, Blowing in cartridges and putting them in there. I do not miss that. Passwords instead of saves? Yes. Uh, <laughs> uh, Mega Man especially. Uh, I had a whole book full of just codes and yeah, passwords. It's a hassle. Because <laughs> when you say it, it would generate a code for you to get back to your game. So to get back to work, you didn't have to load. You actually had to type in a 12-digit code. I think on some of them, it even got real extreme on some of the codes in Oh, it was awful. I mean, it was just absolutely awful. <laughs> but I, mean, I think games like Zelda, putting the uh, battery inside the cartridge allowed you to have some save slots. As long as the battery lasted, because yep. actually that was a common thing with a lot of cartridges up until uh, up until like they were able to do the storage on the on the hardware yep. versus the uh, versus the battery save keeping the keeping the save format going. Um, so one of those things is, goes to is the humidity in your room. Uh, is it being exposed to sunlight? You know, stuff like that. Um, you know, has an impact on how that battery condition. Because those batteries will last for years inside they're not being used. I mean, I know my uh, boss Jason has. Um, I think uh, the first Zelda, and he. Oh, it still saves. It still saves and it works fine. And he hasn't played that thing since. Well, days. <laughs> uh, me, I bought a. Uh, I, I really wish I wouldn't have gotten rid of it. I bought a copy of uh, Pokemon Yellow uh, Pikachu Edition just because I found my old uh, my old uh, Game Boy my old Game Boy Color uh, the yellow one that I got. Uh, there, have I told you all the story about uh, about what happened to that Game Boy? No. Uh, I, Nick's I think you told me this. Yeah. So when I was uh, when I was in I think yeah I was in uh, sixth grade. Yeah, I remember the story. I was in sixth grade, and I had my Game Boy with me. Now they recently passed something at the school saying that if you brought your Game Boy to school, uh, they would take it. They would take it yeah, away. They confiscate, distract it. Yeah. Yeah. I and, remember that. And uh, well, they did that. Well, here's how here's how it went for me. I forgot that I left it in my backpack one day, mm -hmm. and I was getting my science book out, 
and I lifted it out, and it fell out and hit the floor. Oh no! And the sci- and the my science teacher, Mr. Bates, looks back and he's just like, Nathan, what's that? And I'm like, I'm like, oh, I'm sorry, sir, I forgot that. He's like, hey, I'm here, and I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, okay, and I'm like, okay, and uh, he's like, he's like, he's like, speak to me after class, and I'm like, all right, all right. So anyway, I'm sitting there, and I'm, I'm just, uh, you yeah, know, I'm the entire class, and just like, I'm just like, oh god, I really hope I get it back. I hope I get it back. And then um, at the end of class, Mr. Bates says, let's go, Nate. And I'm like, where are we going? And he's like, we're going to the principal's office. And I'm like, oh, oh really? And I go, yeah, and I go down to the principal's office, and Mr. Bates says that Nate was getting this out to play it in the class. I'm like, no, no, it fell out and hit the floor. I well, forgot to take I, it out of my backpack. I did that with you, of course. Yeah. I was, well, yeah. Because I, I got off the, 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 the bus at my friend's house. So I'd have my Nintendo 64, my games, uh, everything in my backpack. Yeah. So. <laughs> well, yeah. And, well, anyway, uh, I get down there, and Miss Clasby, uh, she was a uh, she was our uh, assistant principal, and uh, she was just like, Nate, we just put this out here, but I can't go easy on you just because your mom's a teacher. My mom was the art teacher. Oh. So and uh, was. and then yeah. uh, and then all of a sudden she was just like, I can't go easy on you because of that. I'm going to confiscate this, and as an example, I'm sorry to do this, but I'm going to keep this the rest of the semester. And I'm like, oh, are you no. kidding me? My parents would have went down there no, and raised hell. <laughs> my mom did go down there and raised hell. But Miss Clasby pretty much pulled rank on her and said, did they, and they, said they realize that that, to do that are they? they realized that was $200? Yeah, I would have, yeah. I would have literally called the cops and be like, "Someone stole my Game well, Boy." No, no, no. Well, and, and, I, and, I, and my mom comes down there, raises cane, and then Miss Clasby pulls rank on her and says, "And this is a new rule. We have to enforce this." Well, so you know, that doesn't mean like, you're confiscated. Yeah, well, you, yeah. you cannot take somebody stuff no. like that. Well, they didn't care. This was Wise County. They like they did the same thing at Central. They, they, they tried to be like, yeah, we're keeping it for the rest of the semester. Yeah. Well, I know, I know, but my mom, my mom was, my mom couldn't really do anything. Yeah, and this was, and this was when my mom and my dad just after they got divorced, and uh, my mom was just like, just like Nate, I don't know what to say at this point. I, I, we can't buy you a new one and all this and all that. I remember about two months went by, two months, uh, and Miss Clasby, I saw her put it in her desk drawer and close it. No, I went right over and stole it right back. Well, I stole no. my Yu-Gi-Oh cards back from one of my teachers. Well, I tried to, I tried to, but every time Miss Clasby left her office, she locked the door. Mm. So that she was very, she was very uh, secure. Very secure because <laughs> her daughter, her daughter uh, once stole uh, uh, stole uh, her cigarettes from her, mm. and they were in her purse in her office. And Stephanie goes in there, steals them right out of her bag. And just goes out and just uh, you know went out back and smoked them behind the middle school. Yep. But anyway, what happened was two months go by and I'm in uh, in school suspension for some reason. I forget. I think maybe I was dragged into something by Justin Salyer. Hi, Justin, if you're watching. <laughs> um, and he uh, and he was known for getting in trouble because he always did the dumbest stuff. And one thing that he, I think it was when uh, we jumped off the top of uh, the chain link fence and tried to. And like tried to jump over to uh, this the there was a chain link fence and then there was this uh, balance beam and I think we were trying to jump from the from the top of the chain link fence to the balance beam and all that and I think one kid fell and got hurt and we all went down for it so anyway I'm sitting there in his school suspension and uh, I walk in I walk uh, out for lunch and I'm looking on the desk and I see a uh, I see a Game Boy Color there and I'm like huh that's odd that's, it's the exact same color as mine. And it had a copy of Pikachu Yellow Edition, which was the game that was in it when it got taken from me. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, okay, well, that's weird. And then uh, when uh, Miss, uh, uh, I forget her last name because she's been remarried three times. But uh, I believe at the time, uh, Miss, uh, Miss Sally, her name, first name was Ruth. Uh, but but Miss, uh, everyone called her uh, Miss Ruth uh, for short because uh, who knew where her last name was going to be next year. But anyway... Um, I go up and after she left to go to lunch, uh, after she left to go get food and everything, uh, me and like two of the kids are left in there, and I look on the table and I'm like, I look, I pick it up, I take the cartridge out, and my mom wrote my name yep. on the back of it, and, the, uh, and she also wrote on the back of the game cartridge too. Mm-hmm. And I look, and my name has been scratched off in the exact same spot. Yep. You can actually see the end uh, and everything, and then all of a sudden I'm like. 
son of a bitch. Oh, yeah. I'm just like, oh, my God, are you freaking kidding me? And then, like, I look, I pick it up, I take the cartridge out, and my mom wrote my name on the back of it. And uh, and she also wrote it on the back of the game cartridge, too. Mm -hmm. And I look, and my name has been scratched off in the exact same spot. You can actually see the end uh, and everything. And then, all of a sudden, I'm like, Son of a bitch! Oh yeah! I'm just like, oh my god, are you freaking kidding me? And then like, I look, I pick it up, I take the cartridge out, and my mom, and I'm like, and I'm like, I didn't see, I didn't steal it, I didn't sell it to him, I didn't do anything. And then all of a sudden, I find out that this kid was actually a, a student, a, another student whose parent was a teacher. So apparently, they got it from Miss Clasby, and she get, or she gave it away or something. My mom confronted Miss Clasby about it. And Miss Clappy had nothing to say. She was just oh, like, I don't know how it happened, man. I had it in here in my desk thing and all this and all that. And my mom was just like, Susan, I don't really care where you had it. You said my son would get it back at the end of the semester, and I find and he finds it with another student with another student. How the hell do you explain that? And then Miss Clappy was just oh, like, irresponsibility. And, well, well, and well, and I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I'll tell you what, tell you what. We'll we'll get rid of Nate's in school suspension day, which was like three days. Too three, right? no. Well, I had three days in school suspension, and we'll give him back his Game Boy. And I'm like, and my mom was just like, whatever, that's fine. And I, and I got my Game Boy back, and I uh, got checked out of school that day because my mom wasn't gonna have me there that day because yeah, and uh, yeah, matter how. And all of a sudden, here I was, and I was just sitting there, and my mom was just like. I don't want you taking it to school anymore. I'm, I'm not. Yeah, I'm not. yeah for real. Fuck that. Yeah, I don't want to have my shit I got in trouble because I had a Nerf gun in my backpack once oh in school. Because so we used to play Nerf. And oh, well, well, I, was, I have one too. I got one telling that day, too. Well, school these, shootings weren't up. No, yeah, well, this thing was day. orange, yellow, blue, big Nerf thing. Yeah. It did not look anything new, like nothing resembling a real gun. Yeah. And I had a bunch of the darts inside there and everything, and... That was the thing we uh, we used to play Nerf around my friend inside his double wide trailer. <laughs> I get off the bus at his house and go play. Yeah. So yeah, I was always bringing stuff through school, and yeah, sometimes it was some dangerous stuff, but I never had to worry about anybody going through my backpack or anything like that, you know. But yeah, I never um, brought anything too valuable either because there was always a risk because you're not near your backpack at all times. Yeah. And, yeah, when it came to locker day, when we all had to clean out the lockers and everything, was, oh gosh, do I have anything? Yu-Gi-Oh cards or anything like that because they didn't like any distractions in the school. And I had a similar time. I think three or four of us in the class got busted with Yu-Gi-Oh cards during the recess. Oh, no. During recess, we were out in the playground all in a little corner by, you know, on the big uh, playground. It was a wooden playground. And we were out there playing Yu-Gi-Oh. Yeah. You know? All oh, this teacher came over and she got so infuriated. I rate this hell. And you know why so she was mad? You know why she was mad? Why? Because no, yes. her son was one of the students. I think this was in sixth grade. Her son was one of the students and she had made him get rid of all of his Yu Gi Oh cards because they were quote unquote witchcraft satanic. I had one something similar happen dark to me. Magician wow. girl, had a dark magician girl that has a pentagram on her staff. On, on the Japanese yeah, version, I swear to has God. upside down that grammar and stuff. Yeah, and so, but she was upset because he was playing Yu-Gi-Oh with us, and we were were not supposed to have those cards anyway. But it was during recess; we didn't have yeah. them during class. It was yeah. And we used to play at lunch, and our so teachers we all didn't went care. to the principal's office, and all had our cards taken away, and they were supposed to be given back at the end of the day. We had tournaments at Mountain Empire Comics mm-hmm. on Saturdays. Um, I don't know if you remember those days or not, but I wasn't here for those. I was like I said, I was like oh, yes. <laughs> But yeah, that's when Mountain Empire Comics was on State Street, not Sixth Street. But. Yeah. And oh, I, I was so mad because uh, Mr. Sherritt, I remember his name, took away all my cards and my Zodiac deck, and oh, you know, uh-huh, and we did. We took our tournaments pretty serious. I mean, of course, we're a twelve-year-old kid. We, yeah, we, it is super. Yeah, serious. that that was life to us. <laughs> you know, <laughs> Yu-Gi-Oh cards, Pokemon, video games, and. The childhood memories. Oh, yeah. Schools nowadays, man, they don't stand a chance. Every kid's got a cell phone. Every hell of a month. <laughs> I mean, yeah. they, they don't stand a chance. Now, they're just like, put your cell phones on silent. <laughs> That's really it. Yeah, put your cell phones on silent and keep texting to it. It's, it's kind of funny because the teachers now, like your elderly teacher, will have to ask a 
fifth or uh, fourth or fifth grade elementary kid how how do I update my Facebook? And that kid's like, oh, watch this bad bad go settings, you can log out here we And he's just yeah. like my team, you do that again. I, I didn't realize yeah, exactly. It's like yeah, man, you I I I actually it, back on the back on the you you talking about a nerf gun, uh having a nerf gun and everything. I got busted with a. I, I used to build Gundam models back in the day, and my favorite one, my favorite one that I built was the Wing Zero. I built the yes. Wing Zero that had the double buster gun and everything. And uh, my friend, uh, my friend, uh, I was no, it was Andrew. It was Andrew. I thought I figured it was Jeff, but no, it was Andrew. But I, brought, but my buddy Andrew was into Gundam Wing as well. His favorite was Death Sight, and uh, yeah, he, yeah, he, he loved Death Sight. Uh, and uh, I did, I decided, hey, I'd show him, uh, I'd show him uh, you know, some of the model stuff, and he wanted to see the Buster Rifle. So I was just like, all right, I'll bring the Buster Rifle to school one day, and I'll show you. And the Buster Rifle was about, yeah, that, about that big. Yeah, yeah, about that big, had a little, had a little kind of, uh, thing, a little Don't tell me you got in trouble for having well, that. Well, I showed it to Andrew. I like had this laid out there on the table, two halves, and, I, and, I could, and, I, and I broke the, broke the thing apart. It could split into two guns, yeah. and then I sat down. And then when I had them sitting on the table... All of a sudden, uh, I think it was, uh, oh yeah, it was Miss Hatcher. Miss Hatcher, our literature teacher, saw us, uh, saw us like, uh, like, uh, in the hallway. In the hallway, we had these little tables that we could sit at if we were, you know, if, you know, during lunch or during a break or something like that. And we could sit at them. And, uh, she comes out, she's like, what are those? What, what are those? What are those right there? And I'm like, oh, these are, uh, uh, these are little, uh, model, uh, little, uh, model guns from our, uh, models. From our, uh, from like a, a model that I'm, I'm building, and Andrew wanted to see it. And she's like, Give me those. And she takes them off the table. Probably and she, and she, no, she didn't break them. They're fragile. No, no, she didn't break them, thank God. But she, uh, she takes them down to the principal's office, and she says that I was showing, I was showing Andrew guns. And I'm like, And my mom comes down and holds the things up and says, And says, I'm not really. And says, And, says, and, says, and says, my mom goes, Phyllis, how the hell are they supposed to fire these? <laughs> That's some you dumb can't, people. You, you, you can't. What you need a safety pin to if it, if it even had a trigger. You need a safety pin to get in the daggone to get in the daggone trigger <laughs> hole. What are you talking about? And Phyllis is just like, but it promotes violence and all this oh, and all that. And I'm just like, and and my mom just like, Phyllis, calm down. The calm correct down response would be, happen. Phyllis, go fuck yourself. Uh, my mom was just like, Phyllis, calm down. Stop with all the Columbine pre- paranoia shit, all right? It was three years ago. Let it go. And dude, I used to draw so many guns in my notebooks and dudes getting their faces blown off and shit that if anyone ever saw my notebooks, I probably wouldn't be here right now. I'd be in prison. Because, like, modern culture is just like, oh, that guy's going to shoot everyone. How many people have I shot in my life? No one that's real. Yeah. <laughs> well, well, Only in and, video games. And truth is, if I was going to shoot someone, I worked 10 years in retail, so it would have done fucking happen. <laughs> there, was also, there was also another instance where, well, I, number one, I wasn't very popular. As a matter of fact, a lot of the boys in my class didn't like me because, number one, I actually I actually made good grades at certain inter- at the certain time. At that time, I was still in pace. So I was still in advanced placement. And uh, this was back when my parents were uh, were trying to work out their marriage problems. They were uh, still living under the same roof. And then uh, I remember one kid was talking about behind me, talking about, "Did you hear about that one kid who brought a gun to school because he was afraid and you know he, he shot his bullies and all that?" And we were just like, and I was just and like all the boys were like, "Yeah, yeah, I remember, that, I remember that." And then they like, tapped me on the shoulder like, "Nate, Nate, let me ask you, Nate, would you bring a gun to school if you felt unsafe?" And I'm just like. No, I, I, that, I wouldn't do that at all. And uh, all of a sudden, I, I remember that conversation happening. And then about an hour later, uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Kearns, our uh, our uh, our phys ed teacher, comes over, and he's just like, Nate, Nate, I want you to come with me real quick. And I'm like, okay. I get walked down to the principal's office oh my God. again. <laughs> again. No, dig this, dig this, oh, dig this, crazy. dig this. There are four the four four of the boys that were there behind me talking are all talking to the principal. And I'm like, what the hell? And then the principal asked me to come into her office, Miss Robinson, and she's like, Nathan, those boys just told me something very distressing. They said that you thought you you were thinking about bringing a gun to school. 
And I'm like, I'm like, what? And and all of a sudden, all of a sudden, it's all on me now. It's all me. All four of those boys decided, hey, let's make Nate the scapegoat. And, this whole thing. <laughs> and then, yeah, I, the only thing that would make me want to fucking bring a gun to school. Is being bullies. accused of being mm. fucking bringing a gun. No, 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 no. I'd be well, well, anyway, anyway, <laughs> anyway, <laughs> anyway, my mom. You want me to bring anyway, I'm guess what? Bring they call my mom down to the principal's <laughs> office again. Of course. And uh, my, my mom's in the middle of a class, so she calls in someone to uh, sub for her for that for that period. You're kidding me. Anyway, I'm I'm sitting there in the principal's office, and I'm dumbfounded as to what what the hell just happened. And then my mom comes in, and she's like, like. Like what's wrong? Like what's wrong, Miss Robinson? And then all of a sudden, uh, Miss Robinson goes on the whole spiel about how I threatened to bring a gun to school and all this and all that. And my mom was just like, "Nate, is this true?" And I'm like, "No, it's not true, Mom. They're they're making it up." They asked me if I wanted to bring a gun to school, and I said no. And then all of a sudden, Miss Robinson's like, "But that's not what they said to me." And I'm like, "Yeah, I bet they did say it to you." I bet they. I bet they told you that I was going to really bring school and kill no, no, as yeah. opposed to them coming to the office to tell you that the, that you weren't going to bring it. Well, well, anyway, I, well, anyway, I, I, I got suspended from school for two days because of that. I got suspended, and next thing you know, when I come back to school, everyone's calling me Columbine. Oh my god! So. Everyone. It's Everyone's fucking calling insecurity. Calling People, it, bullies like that shit. It's my friends, insecure. my best friend, actually, his mom had him move schools because of this. Um, <laughs> we've got a recess. Area, and it was, you know, kind of fenced in, big open field playground. And what what did we play as elementary kids? Tag. We play dodgeball, tag. Nope. We usually play Power Rangers. Oh, yeah. Mega Man. <laughs> uh, Mortal Kombat was popular. Mortal Kombat, yeah, that one. Too. So yeah, we were into violent stuff. Oh yeah, uh, that's yeah, that's what that. kids were. Into. Also, we were into Pokemon, Yu Gi Oh cards, and stuff like that. But since we couldn't bring stuff like that, we use our imagination. Of course. Uh, right. You're the Pink Power Ranger today, all right? <laughs> so I'd be the Red Ranger. I'd be whoever, and we would, you know, have tag. We would play. We'd shoot invisible fireballs. Then my friend Josh picks up a pine cone, throws it, and says, "Fire in a hole." And I think it was the fifth or sixth grade teacher was so disturbed about that that he threw it like up, like almost she that she considered on the level of she considered that a bomb threat. What the fuck? And he got suspended for three days. Now, I, or may I remind you, his mom, she was a busy woman. She worked at a factory twelve hours a day, so she she actually was called from work to come get him. And yeah, she raved hell. <laughs> we were like sharing her own. It was like, go, go, mom, go. You know, she was kind of like my second mom. And, but yeah, eventually he moved counties and she was not about to let him stay at that pussy pie school. <laughs> so he ended up going to a county school. And then turned out, same problems there. It was just one of those, you have to be very careful about what your kids say in elementary school day. I am. They think they had a bad then, man. They ain't seen Grand Theft Auto Five or kids playing Call of Duty. I mean, <laughs> we didn't yeah, have to argue them. Or, uh, or hell, Saw. I mean, hell. Mm-hmm. I remember back in like back in like kindergarten, or not actually the first grade. First grade. Um, I remember that when I was in first grade, we were doing like uh, we were playing like soup. We uh, one kid named Aaron was playing a game called Super Spy. What that was is. He was pretty much a spy that went around and killed everybody. That was, yeah. that was how he played. And anyway, uh, this came from uh, him playing uh, him playing uh, Golden. I not Golden Eye, but him watching a Golden Eye movie. Mm-hmm. And uh, he was just like, he was just like, here, I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be James Bond. I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be James Bond. I'm gonna kill, I'm gonna kill you. All right. I'm like, wait. Uh, and I remember he like, he like. Shot me in the head, stung my head, and all this. Hey, you probably played along yeah. with it. Well, oh, I did, I did, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah I, played, like, I played dead. All right, here you go. Boom. Oh, dead. You're suspended for four oh, days. Come on. You know, one of the most bullshit rules uh, in school, at our school at least. Uh, you're alive now. If, Revive. <laughs> if she someone just. Never die. Jesus, God. What the hell was that? Wait, wait, wait. I was trying to tell a story before he got up and interrupted me. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, you, you almost interrupted Mercy, but you failed. Yeah. So. 
<laughs> uh, the Fast. rule that if someone walked up and sucker punched you and knocked your fucking lights out, you would get suspended for fighting. Yeah, if you fought even that, though you, you didn't have any idea fighting. what the fuck happened, I that. you both got trouble if you. It wasn't even if you fought back. If you didn't fight back, if someone just hit yeah, you at our exactly. school, they would suspend you for fighting, both, even though you had uh, nothing to do with it. Involved in an altercation. A violent altercation. You Apparently, know, uh, you're in trouble because you, you pissed somebody off enough to hit you, I guess. So. Of course you can. Evidence points to who's guilty and who's innocent. There's always two sides. So, like, I basically got to the point where I was like, dude, if anybody ever hits me, I'm going to fucking destroy them because, like, why not? I'm going to get in trouble either way. I may as well take the opportunity to break their fucking nose. Well, the thing about it is, I think that generation of teachers or i would say almost that age group of teachers are dying off sadly to say you know that i've had some kind sweet young not not young but kind sweet teachers that were um you know what you would consider elementary school teachers or something mm. like that but man sometimes they gotta get with the program on this shit you know <laughs> it's like damn it's just there's certain things that they do in school that just isn't logical like, and I don't understand why they run schools the way they do sometimes. Well, it's, it's pretty much a, it's pretty much a cattle farm. It's like why do they have to do things and by like situations where they can't use any logic to the situation? You know, why do they have to be like, oh, well, I saw a Game Boy, so this has to happen. There's no way around that. You can't use yeah. any logic to it to say that oh, he there's, just dropped it out of his no, backpack. There's no logical reasoning behind it. It's it really dumb. Forever. And it's annoying. It's a place of education, man. So use your fucking brain a little bit. Like, if you run the place, goddamn. I get that. I understand not wanting distractions and not wanting to promote How are we like, supposed to? with the other students and stuff like that. But kids are going to play. And yeah. whatever's hot, what's hot. Well, I mean, sometimes, and, and kids are not always content with stuff well, like Mario. And I mean, these people are supposed to come off as intelligent and wise to the people that they're teaching. And whenever you're a young kid and you can't even, like, you know, you see the fucking logic flaws and with their actions, how are they supposed to be a good example to you? Yeah, I didn't like any of my teachers growing up. Not a single one. I think my sixth grade teacher was the only one I kind of liked. Well, I liked, like, three of my teachers uh, throughout, like, all of school. Well, okay. Outside of my mother, who was my art teacher in both middle school and high school, um, I liked, uh, at first I liked one, uh, Miss, Miss, uh, <laughs> oh gosh, I forget her last. Miss um, Thompson. Uh, Miss Thompson was the uh, was the music uh, was the uh, musical theater director. You know, she did like theater classes and all that. And um, it was it was really cool to to learn how theater worked and everything like that. And uh, then of course there was a uh, uh, there was my mom's friend uh, Mrs. Uh, <laughs> Mrs. South who my friend who. A childhood friend who not anymore because he uh, he became a little bit of a he became a little bit of a, a dirt bag. Uh, <laughs> no, not just a hellion. Dig this. The man has the man has five children from four different baby mamas. His mother has begged him to get a vasectomy and he won't. She said, "I'll pay for it. I'll pay for it. I just don't want any more freaking grandbabies right now." Because because every time. Every time he he doesn't help take care of the kid, he just dumps it on her. Yep. So his name's Jeffrey. <laughs> yeah. He is uh, he is an alligator who thinks he's a dinosaur, but he smokes way too much. He does look pretty fucking high. Yeah, he is high. Look at <laughs> he's, him. He's our new mascot here. His name. He goes. No, I don't know what the hell's going on right now, man. I'm a friendly dinosaur. Raw. I'm a dinosaur. How does this sound intimidating? Raw. <laughs> we need to do a puppet show with him. We need to. Yeah, Jeffrey, Jeffrey, Jeffrey. the dinosaur. Yep, he's Jeffrey Dinosaur. He's obviously an alligator. <laughs> let's see, let's see this. It's like, like, hey man, let me ask you a question. Uh, what were we talking about? <laughs> yeah, are you a dinosaur, man? Yeah, I'm a dinosaur. You don't look like a dinosaur. What you kind of like dinosaur? Here, here, let, let me prove it to you. Spell D I N A S O R. Raw. Sorry, I was smoking a little too much. Also, why are there two of you, Jacob? 
know. Are you sure you <laughs> Doctor S- Doctor Duff calls it a Tokosaurus Rex. <laughs> oh, nice. I like that. Yeah. That's, that's what that's my scientific name, name now. Oh, yeah. Tokosaurus Rex. Let me say it on the camera so people can see <coughs> how high he looks. Is he gonna is he gonna be able to get in the light there? Oh yeah. yeah <laughs> How you doing? I'm a ferocious dinosaur. Oh, yeah, unfortunately, I can't see the eyes. Ah, uh, it's okay. okay. The eyes are kind of hidden in shadow. How about, How about there? there? Yeah, you gotta move a little closer to it. I think. Yeah, you get a little. Oh yeah, you get a little bit of there. That's awesome. He thinks he's a dinosaur, and uh, he wouldn't be involved in a puppet show one day. Here soon. Don't judge me. I just. Oh, we got a lot of puppets here. I got my octopus one over in the (laughs) treating office. By the way. But actually, that could be his. That could be his. Like his. Uh, his jokes. Like, what do you call a dinosaur who's woke? A Tokosaurus Rex. <laughs> Put the little the fog machine. Over yeah, a little fog, little fog, a little, a little, a little, a little squeezy thing, thing like. <coughs> <coughs> Oh. And one of his quotes is, what a crock. Oh, oh what a crock. Somebody says, this octopus thinks it's a squid. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> squid. Why do you have so many legs? Now the, uh, are, you, are you a squid or an octopus? Yes. <laughs> well, look at that convenient. Oh, I wouldn't yeah. know what to do with that. Right. Right. The, the, that's a little it's inside thing me and Ron have called the retreating octopus. We kind of do like the... Uh, we we use it basically flail our arms out when we want to get out of a conversation, kind of like Zoidberg. Oh, no. When Zoidberg and Future <laughs> like, whoa, 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 whoa. Yeah, I can actually do a pretty good Zoidberg. I've heard it. I've heard it. All right. But that's not every day when Zoidberg is the one. <laughs> I love that. Well, well, of course you love it. It's Zoidberg. Why not Zoidberg? Oh, of course. Why not Zoidberg? <laughs> Alright, what, what is oh. our favorite game is? Uh, that's a broad <coughs> question. Um, I have like three. Okay. Oh, Alright, let's do let's, let's do, do a, a yeah, let's, let's do, do a narrowing of, of that. Mass Effect. Favorite Sorry. <laughs> Favorite Xbox, Xbox 360 game. Has everyone here played on an Xbox 360? Yes. Nick? I can't pick one. I, I got one. Okay, okay, Xbox 360. Halo. Pick a better console. No. Okay, okay. okay. No, that generation. How about PS3? Black Ops 2, dude, on the 360. Black, Black Ops 2 on the 360? Okay. Jacob? I'm a Halo Reach on Xbox 360. Okay. Halo 3. Halo 3? I love Halo 4. I did, I did actually like uh, Tom Clancy's End War. End War, okay. okay. Voice oh, Command. Oh, I got one. Blue Dragon. Blue Dragon? Yeah. Okay. It was actually a good one. Uh, I will say for me, favorite 360 game. Hmm. <coughs> That's a tappy. So there's one Xbox 360 game actually that I can't remember the fucking name of that it would definitely say is my favorite, but I can't remember the name of it because I only had it for like one day. I checked it out from GameStop. It was like Dynasty Warriors, but like more high fantasy. Huh. It was really badass. I would... Does anybody know what that Dynasty Warriors style game on 360 is? That's like Xbox 360 exclusive that's like high fantasy as fuck? And you start with like two characters, and then you unlock more. I'm not sure. And I, I would say for me, I would say for me probably the Mass Effect trilogy because that was the first console I ever played. It. I would say Mass Effect, but I played that all on PC. On PC, yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. It, I mean, I'll say Halo Reach because I think that's the one I put the most time into. But I mean, the 360 had a lot, of, a huge yeah, library of games. Uh, oh, yeah. including <laughs> God of War Two Online was. That was the PlayStation. You mean Gears of War? Two? Uh, yeah, Gears, Gears of War. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah. I'm sorry. I've been playing a lot of God of War. Well, Gears, well, Gears 2, that's... I mean, the Gears... Gears 2 Gears. is where they actually ruined the online for me because I loved the online in the first one and then they put in some mechanics that made it unplayable for me in the second one. I thought one. the second one had the best mechanics. Sticking grenades to walls was awful. The flamethrower was awful. And... 
There was something else that I thought was instant death. Yeah. The yeah, flamethrower is stupid because you can't even take cover against yeah, it. It's overpowered as fuck. That. But that's why you have to dive and fight for that weapon. Ooh. So basically, you have your power weapon. It's kind of like you do on Halo, and you immediately, as soon as you start, you got to book it right for it. And if you can get that thing a split second faster, you can pretty much annihilate the enemy with it. Or throw a grenade at it, too, hoping they run into it. But uh, the shotgun battles on Gears 2 was my favorite. Um, I think the Gears of War series was awesome. Also, Elder Scrolls, uh, I know more ones for the original Xbox and PC. But Oblivion, the first time I played Oblivion was on 360. Uh, incredible experience. Oh, yeah. Incredible experience. Oblivion, a lot of people say Oblivion. So do people prefer Oblivion, Oblivion over Skyrim? Mm-hmm. Oblivion is my all time favorite, man. Like, I could just spend hours every freaking day. Like, I seriously, it was horrible. It was an addiction. Like, Overwatch is to me right now. My, I can't stop thinking about it. It's my, buddy, <laughs> my buddy Chad. Uh, he waited until Morrowind was playable on uh, on the Xbox One with the uh, you know they were doing the uh, emulator thing on there where you can play play your old games on there now. And I think I might have just found. And anyway, um, he uh, he he decided that he would do a playthrough in that game. He would do a bald headed fighting bard, uh, who a fist fighter who never used weapons or anything like that. Oh, ninety nine nights. Okay. Yeah, ninety nine nights was the game. But oh, you know what? But you know what? He uh, and Chad's a big wrestling fan. You know what he named his uh, his bard, his bald headed fight, fist fighting bard? Don't call Steve Austin. No, 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 no. Stormcloak Steve Austin. Oh. <laughs> I'm like, that's perfect. Stormcloak Steve Austin. Who would think of that other than Chad? Like, that's just too funny. All right. So next, call, let's, next generation. Let's go before we hit that generation of uh, video games for 360. I go back to my favorite video games of all time was the Mega Man the, yeah. the, the Super Nintendo and N64 era were my favorite era of gaming. 64 was probably my favorite. Also, that's the time the PlayStation 1 came out to yeah. uh, Mega Man X4, Mega Man 8, um, Mega Man Legends. I know most people, a lot of people are not fans of that game. I absolutely love it. I think it's a masterpiece. Um, Mega Man Legends 2 was a little nuts, but uh, yeah, I'm still looking for my... Mysterious Legends three copy that's somewhere out there in existence. Real quick, there, Blake Benson. Um, I'm a particular of rail guns and coal guns, so I love the Gauss rifle in Doom. That's oh, that's mm-hmm. okay. You got somebody asking about the favorite. Yeah, weapon. The, the Gauss, Gauss rifle, rifle in Doom is actually. It's pretty cool. I mean, the, the, the minigun's cool. The BFG's cool, but I love the rail gun. Well, the rail gun. Me, I remember rifle. when a when a when a Hell Baron spawned in, and all of a sudden. I had a I had my real gun and it had it had a lot of ammo and I'm just like oh I'm gonna rip you to pieces and then I gave I did two headshots and knocked one of his horns off and I'm just like last one and then I shot him and his head went flying off and his his body just like fell down and I'm just like <laughs> that's right real gun baby gas rifle hell yeah but guns and gas rifles two different things <laughs> well yeah but. Uh, Honestly, for me, I, I'd say my favorite Super Nintendo game, I would probably say Link to the Past, but I think that'd be stereotypical. That's a good game. No, it is. It is a great game. game. Yeah. But I will say probably Super Nintendo, just because of the amount of fun I had with my family playing it. I know it's stereotypical, but damn it, I can't help it. Super Mario World. Strictly because... Strictly because it was a game, it was probably the last game that me and my dad sat down and played together before my parents got divorced. And, uh, like, me and him, we went through the entire game together. And I was just like, I was like, grab that, grab that, and let you, let you fly. And, uh, he, and he grabbed the little feather, and he's like, how do I fly? I'm like, go to where I go, and then, and then go up. speed and jump. Yeah, and that's it. And he's just like, oh, God, wow, holy crap. And then he did a dive bomb and took out like like five guys with one dive bomb and I'm just and he's just like holy crap that was awesome and I'm like yeah dad there's a lot it's more secrets in that game than I think any two D sets I've ever played oh yeah I mean and that that, that was hard to top us uh, Marvel was three for NES I mean yeah it's Nintendo has been able to reinvent the wheel like nine times. They like, really have. Like, <laughs> hey, if they're good at what they do, then I mean, they're they're some of the best. You said next generation. All right, so generation after that was like the Xbox PS2 era, and uh, I was Xbox all the way. Whenever the Xbox came out, PS2 had a lot of uh, exclusives that I played a lot. But man, the loading times on the PlayStation 2 
make me want to bang my head against a wall. It's like, <laughs> okay. I, I would do the same thing. Yeah. I remember the, I remember Zone of the Enders because Nick mentioned it earlier. Zone of the Enders to me was a game I got because a friend recommended it to me. Uh, a friend recommended it to me, and my mom bought it for me because my friend recommended it, and I and I said it in passing one I time. I bought it for exactly one reason. Can you guess what it was? Kojima. Not uh, exactly. Xbox? It's because of something the game came with. Oh, uh, Metal Gear Solid uh, Two: Sons of Liberty. Oh, the Metal Gear yeah. Solid Two demo. Yeah, Sons of Liberty. Yeah. Was, and yeah. then I played Zo too, just because obviously I had the game, so I was gonna play it, and it was fucking badass as well. So. Yeah. And I, I love Zone of the Enders. I, I wish that they would have continued the series after the second one. But that is the thing that makes me possibly the most sad about Hideo leaving Konami other than not getting Silent Hills and not having any more Metal Gear is the fact that I wanted so bad. Like, I was waiting for it any day. I was like, I'm hoping Hideo at some point is just like, by the way, which is the third Zone, Zone of the Enders game. And I was going to be like, yes! No, I was just like, oh. The first one was fuck. really, really good. Uh, but the second one actually enhanced the mechanics a little bit, mm. and if they, I, and I think what they were wanting to do with the third game was to go even more crazy. Yeah, dude, the that. third game on modern consoles would have been sick as fuck. Yeah, like, but that's really fucking sad that it's never gonna happen now. Uh, or it'll happen, but it won't be Hideo and it'll uh, be Konami and they'll butcher uh, the game. So. Make my next nine, and I'm on the borderline. It'll, if they will ever make it, or if well, uh, I think given the success of. Uh, the Mega Man Classics, the new Mega Man Classic ones that they've Mega come Man out 11. with. Mega Man 10 and 11. You know, uh, Mega Man X Collection has actually outsold Mega Man 11. The X Collection uh, 1 and 2. Yeah. The one that was released, it outsold Mega Man 11. So, which that I think that really well. shows the uh, from the fans that they won Mega Man X 9. That was even said in the press release, the Capcom press release on the U.S. division. That said, personally, I'd rather see a Mega Man X 9 than a new Mega Man. Because that... Mega Man X had so much potential to offer more than I think the original Mega Man series did, but the fact that they took Mega Man 11 and made it so awesome shows that if they took the potential Mega Man X has with all the abilities, the level designs, they can make it so much more. Oh, yeah. And so in uh, Mega Man 11, there's actually a couple of little hints about Mega Man X, and uh, on that uh, X Collection 2, it actually says X's adventure is not over yet. And so, so that's, I, I guarantee well, they're going to yeah. announce it. They're probably going to announce it here soon. If yeah. anything, if anything, they're probably just going to be like Mega Man X Nine is now is is in production. Capcom has definitely been more about pleasing their fans as of recent. So, well, yeah, yeah well, well, I hope so because Mega well, Man has like fifty something titles, and that was their large, one of their largest selling franchises, if not the largest selling franchise they ever had. Well, mm-hmm. I think I think one thing that I think Capcom has realized. Is that the success of games that actually have thought and process, or you know, good, you know, thought process put behind them, like God of War, like mm-hmm. Unch- like the Uncharted <laughs> series, like uh, like The Last of Us, Uncharted, yeah, you know, your triple A, yeah, those. good triple A titles that have that value single player. Mm-hmm. Because when I heard that one person from EA say nobody pays for single player anymore, it's only it's only online play microtransactions, and I'm just like. Yeah, I'm just like I'm like really, but yeah, really yeah, I would and and and, gar- and I guarantee years. and you know what he did? What's up with, with all these successful single player games that's been coming? Well, out there? no, he he's wanting to play blind man to that because according to him, about the reason Battlefield Five failed was because its single player campaign was bad. And I'm like, no, it failed because you limited the amount of number of maps that people get on, at release. You want people to pay for a net pay for more maps and you want people to pay for microtransactions just so that they can be competitive in the game. Nope. Go fuck yourself. <laughs> I'm sorry. I mean, I guess that explains why Breath of the Wild got Game of the Year and then God of War got Game of the Year. I mean, well, yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, they're both they're both really expansive first part like like first party uh, you know, AAA titles. Mm-hmm. I mean, Breath of the Wild is Skyrim at Skyrim Top cross squad. with yeah Skyrim yeah. Uh, cross with Legend time, of Zelda twelve times the size of the world of Skyrim yeah mm-hmm. so but but insane. yeah you, but you see what I mean it, it's mm-hmm. it's pretty much all like all the good things that were in Skyrim and all the good things about Zelda matched into one yep. in a much more broad and much more vast world oh yeah and it's awesome and the gameplay I think is way better than Elder Scrolls will ever be well, I love Elder Scrolls well, but as far and as then, combat, well there's oh, actually man. they're actually talking about that in the next Elder Scrolls game. 
they're going to take a page out of the God of War book. Wow. Well, so. Because the combat system in God of War is a lot I more... I wish everybody would take a page out of the God of War book because uh, Freaking the Corey gameplay on that is. is so smooth. I mean, you can pick that controller up and within... So that's you know. really funny to me because earlier you called Dark Souls clunky. And when I picked up God of War, you know what I immediately thought about it? I was like, oh, they took a page from Dark Souls. <laughs> well, yeah, it's well, so except, Dark Souls. Except, except for Kratos, it's smooth right from the get-go. Except Kratos has a lot more mobility. Yeah, a Kratos lot more mobility. Yeah. Like, his extent. role is not limited. It's no matter the armor there's he There's no puts delay on, on his role. There's no, de- there's no delay on his attacks or anything like that because of how heavy his armor is. And Molnir. Uh, yeah, and it's... And, I love I love what they've done with the God of War series. I'm glad it went from an arcade style like an arcade style beat 'em up to a character to a more character driven action game. And I love the the changes that they made with Kratos. I love the change that they made with uh, with the lore going yeah, from. Great I thought the difficulty since I played it on normal difficulty, um, I thought it was balanced, very well balanced. <laughs> I didn't die over and over and over at the beginning. But once you start hitting like you know, the Valkyries and stuff like, that, yeah, you're going to get dragged. Your ass well, yeah. is getting wolf. You fried. Well, well <laughs> I remember. I remember like facing the. Val- I remember facing my first Valkyrie. I got my shit pushed in. Oh, hard. yeah, it took me all night yeah. to beat that and, thing. And then eventually, I realized her patterns. I realized mm-hmm. that you have to actually. You can attack them first. And attack. the puzzles are not yeah. actually easy. No, you they're not. You have to literally mm-hmm. spend a lot of time doing the puzzles. So. Well, and for me, when I faced my first Valkyrie. After I beat, after I was able to figure out their patterns and everything, you know, when you get in the room first, you can do some damage to them straight out the gate. Right you know, do your heavy attack, you know, do your runic attacks, you know, your light and your heavy runic attacks, and then pull back and let and figure out what their attack patterns are. When you get their attack patterns figured out, that's when you can actually start to discern the attack patterns of the other Valkyries because the other Valkyries take from each other. They yeah. take different attack patterns from one another. And you learn. And eventually, when I got to the Valkyrie Queen at the end, mm-hmm. who, you know, again, you have to my re- shit remember in. all yeah. those cues and tails. You finally beat the Queen uh, Valkyrie. I watched the run. Yeah, I, uh, it probably took me about 50 attempts, I think. 50 attempts? Something like that. I yeah. but, actually. But, <laughs> I I, mean, I, I, you know, I watched some videos as far as how to get it down. And it, yeah, I mean, it, it was it, like that with Lionel's on uh, Zelda too. Oh you know? yeah, I got yeah instant yeah. yeah. I mean, this, I couldn't achieve oh, the lightning arrows at the beginning. Oh god, yeah, it, it, yeah. The the, you can't the run queen from anything. definitely did not fuck around. Like no. laser no. things. Like uh, what happened? Because what happens? I um the the I, I got to like the first one you get in the campaign right. And I, yeah. I managed to get her down, but I was like, man, if this the rest of them gonna be like this. Fuck, it's gonna be. Tough. Oh, it's even worse. But then it's the harder they yeah, get. And, and I tried to get another one or two, like one like the fast one that moves like really yeah. fast. Yeah, got my oh. ass handed oh. to me every fucking time. And so I was like, all right, I'm gonna take a break on this, and I'm gonna go and get better armor. And, and eventually, yeah. I, do, I got like that fucking kick ass Niflheim armor or whatever. Yeah, that's like Ni- the, 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 the Niflheim one. Too, the though. Niflheim uh, Valkyrie. That one, that one got me because I went in. I found her the first time mm-hmm. without any good armor, mm-hmm. and I and yeah. yeah, I got decimated. Yeah, well, and I, especially when you're running, you got the you're running against the clock there with the, yeah, and you're dying out. But the Niflheim armor is just so fucking op. It is just in general, just for for the defense. So once I got that, I was able. He was he was like he was like what the fuck, man? Because I was blazing. I blazed through like four Valkyries. And then uh, and then of <laughs> course there's the Muspel. Yeah, armor. yeah, because the, I, I fought the Valkyries with. No, I, I spent the first half of the game not upgrading the whole game. Yeah, that, that does that I, I, I still, I, I, I still I, managed to beat and get good at it. I, I, I got well, I well yeah, good gameplay game wise. Yeah, but I, I very quickly learned to immediately run in and use all of my fucking heavies, like the, the all the special all attacks, plans. like the four different special yeah. attacks again, right and, off the bat. And here's and here's the trick that I learned: you do not use Spartan Rage until. You are about out of health. Yeah. yeah, and that's the only time you use it because when you do that, you get all of your health back, mm-hmm. and then and then eventually you can take on the Valkyrie again, and then you get your runic attacks back again. You use your light one first, and then your heavy one, and then switch over to the Blades of Chaos. Same thing with that, and it was and it was just a constant uh, a constant figuring out deciphering. I remember for the Valkyrie Queen on normal difficulty, it took me I think twenty like twenty plus attempts. I, I know it was. I know it was that because because <laughs> be like, for me because for me I I live streamed it. When I live streamed it, there were people just like, "Come on, Nate, you can do this." And I had been behind me, like trying to support me and everything, trying to give me info and everything. And I'm just like, I was like, "You're distracting me. Stop it." Stop it. <laughs> and, and here I am. I'm just like, I'm just like, okay, dodge, dodge, 
dodge, and he's just like, and he's just like, dodge again. And I'm like, no, 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 this is where I, this is where I can parry. And then they they do the parry, and that I parry. Double side. And then, oh yeah, the, yeah. And then then ta, and then pow, 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 pow. Just like just just decimate her. And I remembered at the end when I finally beat her, I was just like, yeah. Oh, dude. Yes! I, well, the thing is, I was playing because this was probably the third night of my attempting to do it. Uh, I had, had I had a red or whatever, and I was just gradually so you know nursing it as I was playing. Ah, uh, yeah. So of course, as I'm getting more red in me, it makes me play like even better. So. Oh, yeah, me too. Uh, but when I fucking finally beat her, dude, I took the biggest fucking gulp out of my red. It, yeah, it was like, it's so red. Right. Yeah. Like, uh, but so, yeah, to your so comment so. earlier, Nick, yeah, I do feel that uh, God of War did take a, a bunch of the good cues from. Um, what you what you guys are describing right now yeah. is the reason to play Dark Souls yeah. because uh, every time I'm you beat a boss Dark in Dark Souls, Souls you get that yes. Oh yeah, yeah. I, I totally <laughs> agree with you. I just um, I spent quite a, I don't know probably about four hours at the most in Dark Souls one. Yeah, and that's the only Dark Souls I played. I was very aggravated. Well, <laughs> I played on PC. Hold on. Yeah, I did. I did. I'm not gonna fix the mic quality. Download DS Fix. What do we got going on? Is it sound distorted? What does it sound like? I don't know, man. We're already at like an hour and 40 minutes. Oh, it's almost distorted. Oh, wow. We sound like. Eyes up, Guardian. We're already at like an hour and 40 minutes. What do we got? Oh, it's almost distorted. Oh, wow. We sound like. Eyes up, Guardian. Hold on. Download DS Fix. What do we got? Oh, it's almost distorted. Oh, wow. We sound like. Eyes up, Guardian. Yeah, definitely echo. We've had some technical difficulties today, so. Oh, wow. We sound like. Eyes up, Guardian. That's weird. Why is it on repeat? I don't know. I don't know why it's repeating. We've got some. All right. I think that's coming from the camera. Maybe. Oh, is it? Damn it. Uh, do we have the camera audio on? <laughs> I thought I had a little bit of sooner. What's well, sorry, guys. We're a little bit. Is it the camera? Has it been like that for an I, hour? I hope not. Jesus I hope Christ. not. Everybody's going to be like, oh, God, no. <laughs> Thanks for letting us know, everyone. All right. Check, <laughs> check. One, two. How do we sound now? Fuck my life! <laughs> I think it's fixed now. All right. Jesus Christ. Well, the thing is, people still watch this, so I think we're... I guess. Right, he says much better. Yeah. Much better? Uh, thank you. There's only certain you people in the that chat that floor. ever say anything yeah, about it. Yeah, really. there's very few people just who are just like, just like, like, hey guys, fix this. Everybody's being like weird. Yeah, hey guys, fix that it. That was horrible. What, like, like, who could have, someone could have said that like, what, an hour and a half ago? It was like, hey guys, <laughs> like, hey guys <laughs> fix that, and we could have just been like, okay. <laughs> Well, we try, did yeah, try. I apologize. We did try to fix it once while we were watching the thing, and you did something and thought it was fixed. Yeah, I, I think well, no, nobody I said that anything because else. Because it was cut because I had the desktop audio going, and that was causing like a super echo. Yeah, it was like a really bad. It's like hello, 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 hello. It's like, yeah. like, but instead that it's just the layering. It, it's like just that little itty bitty microsecond behind that just gives it that double sound. That's oh, so weird. And I'm sorry, guys. I really am. But, uh, okay, yeah, how long have we been going now? An uh, hour and 42 minutes. Wow, okay, well. <sighs> I mean, I could just talk like this the whole yeah. time, and then nobody would know the fucking yeah. difference anyway. <laughs> <clears throat> I wish I could do that. Look, Morty, Morty, I don't want to buzz, I don't want to burst your little bubble of superiority that you're feeling right now, but you're still a piece of shit. <laughs> oh, come on, SpongeBob. I'm not good. Hello no. there, SpongeBob. I'm Patrick. It's like. Mm, it's coming right for us. <laughs> oh, you blew a hole right through me. <laughs> Patrick, no! <laughs> I it's think like, oh, and you then, didn't know. And then, and then all of a sudden, all of a sudden, you hear in the distance, you'll be like, there, he's gone. He's finally gone. <laughs> Did somebody call for a dinosaur? Mm. Nobody <laughs> asked for you. Nobody asked for you. Go back underground. Mm. I'm enjoying the sunshine. Oh wait, that's not the sun. Air is not good, Patrick. Air is it's... not good. No, here, 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 here. Hold, hold on, hold on. <laughs> He's stuck in Sandy's little thing. Let me hear some of that. Maybe just this once. Here you go. Oh, here. here, there you God. go. There you go. Are we are we literally showing drug use on our podcast? No, it is not drugs. This is CBD. CBD. I promise it even says it on the sub. But yes, it does. Right here. Does anybody got a lot? Ooh, <laughs> this one. 
<laughs> accidentally set the puppet on fire. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like he needs to smoke some more CBD. He's got lung cancer or some shit. Here we go. It doesn't sound good. No, it doesn't. All right. Well, that's going to do it, ladies and gentlemen. we got some other stuff to get to. Yeah. So uh, we hope you enjoy what you've seen here. So until next time, signing off, I'm Nate. I'm Nick. Lavina. Jacob. And I'm Roan. And we'll see you then, everybody. Bye. Peace out. Bye. What a crock. Until next time. Oh, fuck. Love you. Love you.